Hey, everybody, welcome to the chapel online. We are so excited you decided to join us on here tonight. Before Pastor takes the stage, I want to give just a few announcements. We had communion online Sunday, and the feedback from that was amazing. So this is what God's prompted us to do. Until the end of COVID-19, we are going to continue to do communion. They used to say it's the mill that heals. So you know what? We're going to believe that God is the healer, and we're going to continue to observe and do communion every Sunday. So make Make sure to get your elements. Also, hey, don't forget to continue giving through this time. Church, you've been doing amazing at this. Last week was awesome. Let's keep up that spirit of generosity and giving and the command that God has given us to bring our first fruits into his house. You can do this by using Cash App. It is money signed, the Chapel Jonesboro. You can do this as well as sending your tithe through the mail. That's 1565 Commercial Court, Jonesboro, Georgia, 30238. Or you can come by at one of the designated times that is on our Facebook page for you to swipe your card or give your gift in in person. Listen, we had a great day today. We served so many families in our community by giving them free lunch. And it was a great, amazing time. Our plan is to do this every single Wednesday and give out lunches and supplies while they last. So if you're interested in partnering with this, reach out to us on our Facebook page and ask what you can do to help. Now, we've got a special announcement video that we're about to go into concerning our Easter service here at the chapel. Easter this year is going to be the best Easter we have had yet, so turn your attentions to this special announcement concerning our Easter service. Chapel family, Pastor Lee here, and I'm super excited to come to you today and give you an update on what's going on here at the chapel. We know we have had to go to online services due to the coronavirus, and per local guidelines, we've had to make the decision to take our Easter service to only online. Now, don't frown, don't get upset, because this is exciting. This is an exciting moment for the church. It is the largest celebration of the year in our nation by far. And because of that, we have the ability to go into every home across America and share the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Pastor's got an exciting message planned for us. Guess what? This is our theme. We're pumped about this. It is resurrect your home. Boy, how more fitting is that right now than for us to be locked up in our homes But what's important about that is that we have to resurrect our home. So get ready, share this video, invite your friends, get pumped up for Easter Sunday. It's going to be great. Don't change your routines on Easter Sunday, okay? Get up, shower, get ready, put on your Sunday Easter clothes. You still can do that, all right? And get ready to resurrect your home. Hey, good evening, Chapel family. I'm so glad to be coming to you tonight live streaming. Are you excited about the Word of God that God has for you tonight? You know, as I was beginning to pray and ask God what it was that He wanted me to preach tonight, He he brought me to the Scripture found in John 15. So if you're watching online tonight, you're streaming with us, whatever it is you're using, whatever device, uh, John 15, I want to read to you verses 1 through 8 of John chapter 15. In verse 1 of John chapter 15, He said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine and you are the branches. He who abides in me, I in him bears much fruit for with 
without me you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered, and they gather them from throwing them into the fire, and they are burned. If you abide in me and my word abides in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. By this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit so that you will be my disciples. My title tonight is Cutback Season. We're in a time right now that people are going through a cutback season. You're dealing with circumstances. You're dealing with problems. You're dealing with turmoil. You feel like your pay has been cut. You feel like your hours have been cut. And you're saying, what am I doing? But I want to give you a word of encouragement encouragement tonight. My God has told me to tell you that, that the vine is being trimmed back but as surely as it's being trimmed back, he said you will bear much more fruit as time goes on. So I want to talk to you a little few words tonight. I want to give you something that I feel like is going to take you through these times. You see, many times we go through attacks in our spiritual lives. Now I'm talking about Christians. I'm talking about people who love Jesus. You see, you come up under attack in your spiritual lives and, and you go through these seasons of distress. You go through these seasons that seem to be repetitive. They seem to repeat themselves. But what I love about God is God is open to share with you that there will be seasons in your life that you will go through attack, attacked by the enemy when you can easily rebuke him and take authority and tell him that that you uh, that you he you can't he can't have my body you can't have my family you can't have my finances you can't have all of these things you can begin to look at Satan you can actually open up the door of your house and take your broom and tell him he has no place in here uh, you can tell him uh, to take up his weapons and flee for you have no authority over me and you can begin to call these things out and you will have peace in your house in the name of Jesus. So you see, we don't have to worry about how we rebuke the enemy because the Lord has given us power over the enemy and we can stop the enemy's onslaught of his attack. Now I know that in the past few days, we've experienced a lot of different things from our, our governments, our local offices making this call or making that call. Some things we're, we're happy with and some things we're not too happy with. Now, I'm just going to tell you, I'm not very happy about what's being told and what's being said. But, but I want to tell you this. There's not a weapon in hell that can come against the body of Christ and the kingdom of God. Let me tell you something, folks. This, this disease, this virus is already defeated. We're just calling out the manifestation of it. And what I, I want to tell you tonight is that you, some of us are going through a pruning time. Some of us are going through a cutting time in our life. You rebuked the devil. Uh, you, you, you pleaded the blood of Jesus Christ. You've anointed yourself with all and the problem still seems to persist in your life. So what do you do when God has ordered your steps? And today he's ordered trouble as well. Now, don't let anybody tell you that being in the will of God means that you won't experience trouble because Jesus was in the will of God, but yet Jesus had to go to the cross. Don't let anybody tell you that you, 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 you got in trouble because you were not in the will of God. They may, uh, you see, uh, they may not be uh, true at all. You see, somebody will say, well, you're, not in, you're in trouble because you're not in the will of God. But let me tell you, Job was in the will of God and got in all kinds of trouble he lost his children he lost his stuff he lost his marriage and everything all of his friends came along and this is what they said you must not be living right Job but what did God say God said that Job was a faithful and an upright man who escheweth evil you see the truth of the matter is is that the Lord loveth whom he chastiseth we go through seasons in our life where there's going to be some prunings in our life. You're going to lose some good stuff. Now, believe it or not, just looking at me, you wouldn't know this, but I'm 55 years old. 
I've lived long enough to know that, that you can pray until your lips are dry and your tongue feels like sandpaper. But every now and then, you're gonna go through something. Somebody's gonna die. Somebody's gonna get sick. Somebody's gonna get a cold. Somebody's gonna sneeze at you. You're gonna go out in public and somebody's gonna cough at you. And what are you gonna say? Don't cough on me. You might have that corona. But you see, not everything that comes out of somebody is sickness. Some of us get some allergies. Some of us get some things in our life. Whatever it is, mm, mm, it's not going to take you away from God. You see, the truth of the matter is that you can be connected to God like a branch to a vine. You can be productive in producing fruit and God still may have to cut the fruit in your life back. Now, we don't like that, do we? Uh, it's been reported that we have just had one of the greatest economies that we've ever experienced, and now it is one of the worst that we've ever experienced. But can I tell you, that's just part of the cutting back. So what do you do when you're in a cutback season and you've lost some stuff, you've been through some stuff, some changes, and you feel like you're running out of time? You see, vines don't produce fruit all year long. If you've ever had grape vines or, or what we call muscadine vines or scuppernine vines, all of those different type of vines, they don't produce that fruit all year long. The apple tree doesn't produce apples all year long. The orange tree doesn't produce oranges all year long. There is a season and a time that that vine or that tree will begin to produce that that it is created to produce. Did you catch that? You see, we're created to be productive in our lives. We're created to produce fruit in our lives and there are seasons that we don't produce in our lives but it's not time to get stirred, discouraged because you don't produce fruit in a time in which you think you should because my word tells me in Ecclesiastes chapter 3 that there is a season and a time for everything. So what do you do when you're in a cutback season? As I opened up tonight, I opened up in the book of John chapter 15. And he began to speak about the vine and the cutting back of the vine and the, the product of the vine. You see, they don't produce fruit all year round. I need you to understand that tonight. Some of you waited on your season. You, you got a little fruit going. You lost it. You got pruned. You got it back. You had to wait till the next fruit bearing season. And, and here comes the fruit bearing season again. You lost some and you got cut back. When the Lord allows you to lose something as a child of God, you have to have it in your mind and in your heart and in your spirit that if God allowed me to lose it, he's going to replace it with something better in my life. I dare somebody this way watching me tonight to say that God's going to do something new in my life. Say it again. God's going to do something new in my life. In order to do something new, listen to me, the former things have to pass away. Do you hear what I'm saying? God said, I'm going to bring you into a new green place. I'm going to let you into a larger place. I'm going to add increase into your life. You see, that's the amazing thing about God is that God will talk to you about plenty when you have lack. He will talk to you about feeling good when you're feeling horrible. He'll talk to you about joy unspeakable and full of glory when you got sorrow in your heart. He'll talk to you about overcoming when you just had the weakest weekend of your life because God calls those things as though they, oh hallelujah, I feel the Holy Ghost in here tonight. God calls those things as are they are not as though they are were. He knows the difference between the process and the purpose. You see, we're going through what I want to call the process now. But we can't look at the process. We have to look at the purpose. The Bible said that Jesus did not enjoy going to the cross, even despising the shame of the cross. But for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross saying, I'm not going to stay here. Somebody needs to say that tonight that is watching us. Somebody needs to say, 
It might be bad right now, but I'm not going to stay here. Oh, hallelujah. I can hear Jesus saying, I may be nailed up right now, but I'm not going to stay here. I may be in a tomb right now, but I'm not going to stay here. You see, I can hear him saying, this is just a three-day situation, and I'm coming out of this thing tonight. I dare somebody to comment on your comments tonight and say, I'm coming out of this thing. I've been in the middle of some situations. I've been in the middle of some circumstances, but I'm coming out out of this thing tonight. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody give him praise. Hallelujah. It's all right. You can praise him in your homes. You can praise him in your homes. You ought to praise him so loud that your neighbor hears you. You ought to praise him so loud that your husband sleeping on the couch gets up from where he's at. You ought to praise him so loud that the kids run out of the bedroom and they say, I don't know what's going on, but my mama and my daddy are glorifying the Lord. Hallelujah. You see, we don't have to have church in a building. You can have it in your home. Oh. Then he says, henceforth, I no longer call you servants, but I call you friends. He says this is about a relationship. This is not just about reproduction, but it's about a relationship. He said there's a graduation in our relationship that could have happened without you going through some suffering. Oh, I like that, that he says I no longer call you servants, but I call you friends. Because in the process of suffering, you and I have become closer. And I will not leave my will a mystery in your life anymore. I want you to understand that there's a difference between being a servant and being a friend that is a servant that knoweth what his master does. Oh. You see, Jesus was saying, I took you through some tests and I told you to do some stuff just because I said so. Now, how many times have we told our children, you do that because I've said so? You'll do that because I said you're to do that. But he said, I told you to go just because I said so. I took you through some tests and through some trials, and I didn't explain it. I made you bear it. I made you put up with it. I let you cry yourself to sleep. I didn't wipe away your tears. I let you go through some sorrow and even your pain. You kept on serving me and praising me and trusting me. And he said, now guess what? I trimmed your vine back a little bit. I trimmed you back. Your finances were down. You were struggling with some things going on in with your life. He said, but now, glory to God, you're ready for a promotion. Oh, God, I feel the prophetic utterance in this place tonight. There's a flow in this building tonight. I'm preaching to somebody that's had to endure some attacks, somebody that's had some cutback, somebody that's had some criticism, somebody you've been ostracized, but you went through it. He lifted you up in the middle of your problems. He wiped the tears out of your face. Oh, though he slay me, yet I shall trust him. Though he slay me, yet I shall trust him. And the Lord wants you to know this tonight, that he wouldn't allow you to go through all of that if he didn't have something in store for you. Oh, somebody tonight, you better get the hollering in there. God's going to do something better. He's going to do something better. There's going to be better joy. There's going to be better peace. There's going to be better purpose. There's going to be better power. Oh, now I'm a lot better because why? I got better wisdom. I got better understanding. I got better insight. I got better self-control. Oh, I got better. You don't hear what I'm saying tonight. I am stronger. I am wiser. I am tougher. I am more tenacious. I am, oh, hallelujah, relentless in what he's called me to do. Oh, you know, sometimes it's good for us to have been afflicted because had we not been afflicted, we would have never known the power of God. We would not be able to say, I'm stronger now. I'm wiser now. I'm tougher now. 
Oh, there are people that talk about what you used to do but I'm stronger than what I used to do. There are people that used to say, you make some very horrible decisions, but hallelujah, somebody tonight, you're a lot wiser now than you were before. You need to forget those things which are behind you, and guess what? Reach for those things which are in front of you. Hallelujah. How many blessed people do I have watching tonight? How many blessed people? I mean blessed people. You've been through some things, but you're blessed. You know you're blessed because God's hand is on your life. Returning to John 15, you'll understand that God took a vine and he took it through the pruning process. He took the fruit that it had and he came back with more fruit. Did you catch that? He took the fruit that it had. That means the fruit that it grew, he cut it away, and what happened? It came back with more fruit. I'm trying to tell somebody tonight, some things have been cut away in your life. You lost some things. You've given up some things. But my God told me to tell you he was just cutting some stuff away to bring back more than you've ever seen before in your life. Somebody here tonight, hallelujah, you you got more on the way and you just don't realize it. You've been through some cycles. You've been through some season, you've been through some, some turbulence, but you finally come out, and oh, somebody understands what I'm saying. <sighs> Let me tell you, you can be out of trouble and be blessed and still be worried. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You can be out of trouble, you can be blessed, but you can still be worried. It's almost like that cloud that hangs over your head. You, it, it's almost like you're waiting to go through something else because you've been on a cycle of distress and, and worry and the enemy has, what he has done, he has created a pathology of turbulence in your life. You're no longer expecting the blessings. You're expecting trouble and you're waiting on the next thing to hit you in the back of the head. But the Lord told me to tell you that there that something this evening. He said, you ain't going to lose this time. You ain't going to lose this time. Let me say it again. You ain't going to lose this time. You see, now we preach all the time about Joseph and what Joseph went through. Yes. How his brothers rejected him, how he got thrown into the pit, how he ended up in prison, and all of that. Finally, he came to the palace. But listen. What we don't tell you is that Joseph came out. He never went back through that thing again. We talk about Job and how Job lost his house, lost his marriage, lost his children, lost his animals, lost his health, went down through all those things, but we never talk about him getting the stuff back that he lost. He never went back to the stuff. You see, I got something to tell you tonight. There's some things that you went through in your life that you'll never go back through again. I said never again. You're never going to go through it again. That's what made Miriam get a tambourine and start beating it to the glory of God. Oh, do you hear what I'm telling you? Moses' mother, here they were coming out of bondage, coming out of Egypt. She was had been through some bad stuff, and she picked up a tambourine and began to play it because what she saw, she saw the Pharaoh go down in the Red Sea, and God said that the enemies that you see today you shall see no more and that woman got to dancing I don't know if you've ever been there before but let me tell you something when you see the enemy go down you ought to be dancing and shouting when you see the problems go away that's when it's time to pick up your Holy Ghost tambourine and begin to play it some oh I wish I had one here tonight oh I wish I had one here tonight in this place Oh, somebody give him praise right now. Give him praise right now. I got to close. I know some of you got food on in the oven. I can smell the chicken cooking. I always like to say it on Sunday. Can you smell what the rock is cooking? Y'all better not be watching WWE tonight instead of me. But I want to tell you this. The word said that you should bring forth fruit. He said, you're going to be fruitful. 
I don't think you got it. He said, you're going to be fruitful. You're going to be fruitful. He said, I dug around you. I let you go through some stinky stuff. You had manure around your feet, but you're going to be fruitful. Somebody say fruitful. You see, the problem with this promise is that when you read the back in the 15th chapter of John, the vine had been fruitful before. And when you've had good times before and lost them, when you get good times later, you're still afraid because you think you're going, it's not going to last. But he just didn't say that you would bring forth fruit, but he said that your fruit shall remain. See, some of you are trying to live from season to season when he's telling you that the fruit he's about to pour out on you shall remain, that he shall open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you can't contain. God said, I'm going to put, put to an order of protection around your blessings. Not only am I going to keep you, I'm going to keep that that pertains to you. Oh, he said, I'm going to keep your shoes from wearing out. I'm going to keep your cabinets from going bare. I'm going to keep your refrigerator running. I'm going to keep your mind straight. Is there anybody ever been kept by the Lord? You see, sometimes you didn't have a job, but God kept you. Sometimes you didn't have a friend, but God kept you. Sometimes you couldn't figure it out, but God kept you. And he said, you shall bring forth fruit. There's an order of protection around your fruit. And it's not just protecting it when it's right. He says, I won't ever let your vine cast your figs before time. I don't think you read that scripture with me tonight. He said, I'm going to stop you from going too fast. Huh. Have you ever just come into a lot of money and it was there one week and gone the next week? I got heads nodding all over right now. People from state to state that are watching tonight, you're thinking, oh, that, uh, I hate to say it, but that'd been me. Money was here one day and it was gone the next. You had a long list of I'm going to buy this and I'm going to buy this and I'm going to buy this and I'm going to buy this. But, but what did God say? He said, I won't let your vine cast your figs before time. He said, I'm going to stop you from going too fast. He said, but I'm also going to stop you from going too slow. I'm going to cause you to bring forth your fruit or oh, stay right on the vine until you're fully right. And then I'm going to preserve that that I've given you. He said, you'll bring forth fruit and your fruit shall remain. So what is God saying? He said, I'm going to bring you to a place of stability. He said, I called you to be stable. I called you to be steadfast, to be unmoving, to be always abounding in the work of the Lord. I didn't call you to play games and to take you up and down like you're on a roller coaster at Six Flags. He said, the road is about to smooth out and you're coming into a stable place. He said, you're concerned about the fruit in your life. God says, I'm concerned about your relationship. <laughs> you see, that's where I want to bring some separation tonight. We're so focused on our religion that we have <sighs> miscarried our relationship. We're so focused on this is what we have to do that we missed our relationship on what we should do. We, 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 we're coming into the season of Easter and, and no doubt there's a lot of disappointment. I, I just got in from Walmart just a little while ago for, for uh, looking for some toilet paper. We got some, but well, going to get some things. And, and, and as me and Pastor Sabre walked up the aisle, I saw all the Easter candy and I saw all the Easter baskets and I thought, you know what? They're really going to take a hit on this this year. But then the Lord began to speak to me. He said, it's never been about the candy. It's never been about the basket. It's never been about the suit and the tie. It's never been about how C 
seeing somebody one time a year. He said, it's been about me having a relationship. He said, it's been about me laying my life down uh, upon an old rugged cross. He said, it's been about me giving my only begotten son so that whosoever will. He said, I love my people so much that I gave it up for them. God is calling the United States of America and this world back to a relationship with Jesus Christ that we will drop on our knees before him and begin to call out the name of Jesus, the name that is above every name, the name that every knee shall bow, the name that every tongue shall confess that I am the Lord. He said, you're going to know you're my friend when I start telling you my secrets. He said, when you're laying in the bed in the middle of the night, and I tell you why I took you through all of that stuff. Oh, you're laying there, and I tell you why your last friend couldn't stay your friend. And I show you what I was doing while you were suffering earlier that day. And he said, I'll even tell you how I took you from being sick in the hospital Oh, oh, he said, but you got more faith than you ever had before. He said, I'm trying to tell you. He said, the, the Bible even said that the secret of the Lord was them that fear him and that he shall show them his covenant. Yeah. Not those that are afraid of him, those that have reverence for him. You see, when you feel reverence, respect, Honor the Lord. God will tell you his secrets. He will tell you your destiny. He will reveal your legacy. He will tell you what he has in store for you because you're coming into a place of stableness. But there's one thing that you must realize. When you come into this place of stableness, you can't live there in fear because what he's saying to you tonight, and this is for the people who have lost some stuff, God says, don't be afraid when you come into the promised land to eat the grapes and enjoy the milk and honey because I have brought you in to this land for such as a time as this and you're not going to lose it this time. Some of y'all need to step up from where you're at and tell the Canaanites, the Amalekites, the Jebusites, the Hittites that you're not going to lose it this time, that you're going to bring you into a stable place because God is going to make sure that your latter days are greater than your former days. Hallelujah. God never lets you go up and land upside down. He said, I'm gonna make sure that you end well. He said, you didn't start so good, but I'm gonna make sure that your latter days are greater than your former days. Oh, whatever in your former days God did for you, God said, I got better things. Somebody don't hear what I'm saying tonight. He said, it's just a simple adjustment. This is not a prayer to get God to do what's already done. He said, this is a simple adjustment. This is not exercising your faith to get you to believe. That's already done. This is an exercise in your faith to trust him. To trust him. To lean not on, I'm just going to give it to you PD form tonight. Lean not on what you seem to understand. Trust not what you feel your feelings are telling you to trust, but trust that that he is telling you to trust. Believe that that he has already written down in his word. This very scripture that I opened up tonight in John 15, 1 through 8, is written in red. And it is written for a reason. It is written in red because God is speaking specifically his word. It hasn't been penned by another author, author or translated by another individual. He had spoken these words specifically. So tonight, in your home, right where you're at, I'm getting ready to close, but I want to speak this to you at home. Right where you're at, on your job or ever, uh, if you're in another church and you're watching, God bless you. But this is what the Lord told me to speak to you. He said to tell you that the days to come shall be difficult. But he said don't lean on what you see in those days. 
Don't fall to what you see in those days. He said, understand that I am the Lord God and I shall move not. He said, I heal and I deliver. I provide and I restore. I redeem and I refill. He said, I have you in the palm of my hand. So I want to close tonight in prayer. Father, I thank you tonight that we have received your word, God. I thank you tonight that you have given us technology, God, that we can reach out across this country, God. God, that we can evangelize greater than where we're at. God, I thank you, God, for placing me here at the chapel in Jonesboro, Georgia. I thank you for the vision that you have given our leadership team to reach out to this, this county and to this, this city right now, God. But God, I thank you for those that are viewing tonight because God, there's somebody tonight that needed to hear a word. They needed to hear encouragement, God. They needed to understand that they're not gonna be down for long. God, they needed to understand that you will hear their cry, you heard their call, you heard their plea, and you've come down to see God. And God, I believe tonight that God, you're putting a new song in somebody's heart. God, you're putting a new song in their spirit, God. You're giving them a, re a revitalize. Uh, you're reviving their house. You're reviving their home, God. You're restoring some things, Father. Now, God, I speak tonight that if anyone's sick in their body, that God, that sickness has to submit itself to your name, Jesus, and that it is removed. God, I speak to the pandemic that is going right now, that God, not only will it be slowed, but Father, I speak that there be an evaporation process that will take place over it, and that it will begin to submit itself unto you, that Father, authority is all yours, God. Lord, we know that you make medicine, God. We know that you've given the doctors wisdom, but God, we know that one outstretch of your hand can do far more than we can do in a thousand spoken words and God tonight we trust you for that God we trust you God that you have every one of us in the palm of your hand and God in these homes tonight again Father let your peace be found there Father and if there's someone watching tonight that doesn't know you as the Lord God right now is the time that they can say out Father forgive me of my sins come into my heart give me a new life God I thank you for tonight and I thank you for this word I thank you for the opportunity to share it in Jesus' name. I want to thank you tonight for watching us on live stream. I want to thank you for allowing me to come into your homes. Chapel family, I want to thank you for the support, the calls that you've given us here at the church, how your heart has been poured out to us. We want to thank you for that. And here it is. Not long and not very long at all. We'll be together again. But until that time, we'll see you next time. I love you. Chapel family, Pastor Lee here, and I'm super excited to come to you today and give you an update on what's going on here at the chapel. We know we have had to go to online services due to the coronavirus, and per local guidelines, we've had to make the decision to take our Easter service to only online. Now, don't frown, don't get upset, because this is exciting. This is an exciting moment for the church. It is the largest celebration of the year in our nation by far. And because of that, we had the ability to go into every home across America and share the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Pastor's got an exciting message planned for us. Guess what? This is our theme. We're pumped about this. It is resurrect your home. Boy, how more fitting is that right now than for us to be locked up in our homes but what's important about that is that we have to resurrect our home. So get ready, share this video, invite your friends, get pumped up for Easter Sunday. It's gonna be great. Don't change your routines on Easter Sunday, okay? Get up, shower, get ready, put on your Sunday Easter clothes. You still can do that, all right? And get ready to resurrect your home.